Hello everyone, my name is Neha and welcome to the ninth lecture on electronic circuits. Um, in this lecture, we're going to cover the third part of oscillator circuits. Uh, so we will be uh, seeing LC oscillators, uh, crystal oscillators, etc. So let's get started. So LC oscillators, uh, it is used for the generation of the high frequency uh, signals in the range of radio frequency. They are used in the feedback path of the oscillators and they basically re resonates at a, uh, oscillates at a resonance frequency um, in such a way that uh, the circuit provides frequency selectivity uh, for the oscillators. So that's the benefit of this uh, LC oscillator that uh, you can select the frequency at which you want to oscillate the circuit. And now looking at the this picture here, uh, which is the LC tank circuit. Uh, this is the inductor, this is the capacitor, and then some voltage is connected to this LC tank circuit. So let's say some voltage is applied uh, to the circuit, uh, then what will happen? The capacitor uh, will start charging, and uh, uh, let's say when when the capacitor is fully charged, uh, and at that point, at, at that point, if we disconnect the supply, uh, then what will happen? The capacitor will try to discharge through the inductor. And this electrostatic energy of the capacitor will get uh, stored across the inductor. An inductor will store this energy in the form of magnetic field. Now, uh, we are still considering that the voltage is disconnected uh, and the energy when the, it is disconnected and the energy in the capacitor has been stored by this inductor in the form of magnetic field. Now what will happen uh, when there is uh, no, no voltage applied here and uh, then what will happen? There should, there should not be any flow of current uh, through the inductor, uh, but the inductor opposes the instantaneous change in the current. So according to the Lenz law, it produces a back EMF. Okay, so it produces a back EMF so that the same amount of current can uh, continuously flow through the inductor. So now because of this uh, back EMF in the inductor, same amount of current will through the through the inductor and and because that now capacitor starts charging in uh, because of that, uh, what will happen? Uh, some current will flow into this capacitor and then capacitor starts uh, charging in the reverse direction. So previously when the supply was on, the capacitor was charging in this direction, like in this, in this direction, but then, uh, but then we, but then now, now the charging of this capacitor is going to be opposite because you are getting, this capacitor is getting the energy from the inductor in this way. So now the capacitor will charge in an opposite direction. Okay. Uh, so what will happen? So gradually, uh, what will happen? The energy which is stored in the inductor, uh, will get converted into this electrostatic, uh, electrostatic energy of the capacitor. And once this capacitor is fully charged, uh, then what will happen? Uh, the capacitor will once again discharges through the inductor in the reverse direction. Okay. In the reverse direction. So, uh, what will happen in this way? This LC tank circuit, uh, it will basically transfer uh, the energy uh, in between inductor and the capacitor, and because of that, we are getting the oscillation in the output. So, that's how it works. Uh, change by transferring the energy from uh, L to C and C to L, and this transfer of energy basically produces the oscillation. Okay. Uh, now, till now we have assumed that uh, this inductor and capacitor, they are idle uh, and they are transferring the energy and there is no loss. But in practical cases, this inductor will have some uh, finite amount of uh, ohmic, con uh, ohmic resistance and, uh, and this capacitor will have some finite leakage current. And because of this, over the period of time, what will happen? The oscillations, uh, which is produced by this LC circuit, they will basically die out. But that's what we don't want. We don't want the oscillation to be, uh, to die out. Uh, so to maintain the sustained oscillation, what we do, we provide the external energy to this LC tank circuit. So what your circuit see here, this essentially pro producing an oscillation, but um, it's, it's not a good circuit because um, ideally it's fine, but uh, 
practically it's not a good circuit we need to provide some extra energy to the circuit so that the oscillation produced uh, are are sustained uh, sustained oscillation can be produced so so in oscillator so this energy this extra energy additional energy is basically provided by the amplifier circuit so for the amplifier circuit you can uh, use the operational amplifier or you can use any transistor amplifier so in this particular circuit uh, we have used operational amplifier as our uh, as our main uh, circuit and in the feedback circuit uh, we have uh, this uh, oscillator and depending upon what we put here in z1 z2 and z3 uh, we will have we will get uh, we will get either the hartley oscillator or the colpitts oscillator uh, so the frequency selection network z1 z2 and z3 provides a phase shift of 180 degrees so phase shift is 180 phase uh, degree phase shift is provided by this feedback network and then 180 degree uh, phase shift is provided by this amplifier so if you add both then that will make your 360 degree or you can say zero degree and that's what we want for the uh, sustained oscillations uh, two well-known oscillators we use colpits and this should be Hertley um, uh, we are missing T here so Hertley oscillator so if you put Z1 Z2 if these two are your capacitor and Z3 is your inductor then that is your uh, colpits oscillator and if your z1 and z2 are inductor and z3 is capacitor then that is your hartley oscillator uh, so now let's move on to the next uh, so this is the general circuit we have taken for lc oscillator and still we haven't put anything uh, we haven't put uh, uh, the the capacitor or inductor here uh, we are assuming in terms of this impedance and uh, trying to solve the uh, the derivation uh, to find the gain and uh, so so we have so if let's let's maybe go from here so vf is the feedback voltage here and uh, which is equals to beta v naught so this is the same formula you have seen in the last lecture or last last lecture uh, beta is basically the ratio of this voltage divider so z1 by z1 plus z3 v naught and then zp uh, is the parallel combination of uh, these resistances and that will come out to be this so for the equivalent circuit of the output uh, so ultimately we want a relationship between the output and the input okay uh, so to find that uh, we have to go through this derivations okay uh, so so till now we found vf which is the feedback uh, voltage and for the equivalent circuit for the output uh, this is the this is the ac circuit you you this is the circuit ac circuit here you see here this is uh, the voltage gain av uh, and and this is minus av dot uh, multiplied by vi uh, so this is the ac circuit we have shown here uh, this is the sh shorter version of this circuit and uh, zp is the uh, parallel resistance which has been formed from this uh, this voltage divider so we have put here and r naught is the resistance here uh, which is mentioned over here and then if you solve it uh, apply the kv uh, then you can find the relationship between the input and the output voltage which will come out to be this okay uh, so v naught and v i v naught divided by v i is uh, is basically your gain so that's why we have represented here with a and this is minus a v z p uh, if you put the value of z p here then you'll get here uh, this particular term and then r naught will be equals to this so i think some of the terms will be cancelled out because of this z p present here so uh, so you can do the derivation uh, this whole derivation is pretty easy uh, now to find the loop gain uh, loop gain is a, uh, represented by a beta beta you already know uh, we uh, which is the basically uh, ratio of z1 by z1 plus z3 uh, and so you will put this value over here and then you will get this whole uh, this formula and if the impedance of all pure reactances uh, that is z1 is equals to jxi z2 is equals to uh, jx2 z3 is equals to jx3 so if you put this 
uh, the loop gain will become like this okay in terms of uh, imaginary and uh, real values so let's say if the imaginary part is equals to zero uh, then what will happen this will be equals to a zero okay so this if this is zero then this whole term this will be equals to zero so it indicates that at least one reactance must be uh, negative negative which means capacitor z1 and z2 must be same type and uh, x3 must be of the opposite type so if these two are inductor then this sh this should be your capacitor if these two are capacitor then this to be needs to be uh, inductor so ultimately uh, we found that ab uh, is equals to 1 and uh, your av uh, is given by x2 by x1 so this has been obtained from here uh, because this AB is 1, so if this is 1, then X2 will go here and X1 is go here, then AV voltage gain is this. Okay, so for unit gain and 180 degree phase shift, you will get this value. So the, actually, ultimately, this, this result is important, this. Uh, now, uh, now putting uh, the value of Z1, Z2 in the feedback path, and here if you notice that we are using the transistor, as an amplifier and you can represent you can add like uh, this is not a practical circuit you have to add some uh, resistances and make make it a make it a practical circuit here okay but for now just understand this is your feedback uh, your feedback circuit and um, and and if you have l1 l2 like this and this is the capacitor then that's your Hartley oscillator and uh, if you have cap capacitor here and inductor here then that's your culpit oscillator and the frequency, uh, 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 you can calculate the frequency here, uh, omega naught is equals to 2 pi f. So f is equals to 1 by 2 pi under root L1 plus L2 uh, bracket uh, multiplied by C. That's your frequency you'll get the same here. Uh, frequency will become 1 by 2 pi under root L C T, where C T is basically this, uh, your capacitor. And then you can uh, calculate the transconductance GM L1 by R L2 and in this case transconductance will be C2 by R C1. Now from the next, so this slide and the next slide uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be uh, working through these uh, coming slides very quickly. Uh, so this is the AC equivalent model of this particular circuit uh, and uh, it, uh, it uh, so in this equivalent circuit, it is assumed that the linear small signal model of a transistor is used. Uh, the transistor capacitors are neglected. Uh, uh, in input resistance of the transistor is large enough. Uh, so these are the assumptions you uh, you assume when you make the AC equivalent circuit. And uh, this is another topic, like how you create the circuit uh, uh, from a given given uh, this uh, given uh, any transistor model, how you can create a AC equivalent model. So just for now, understand that this is how the AC equivalent model looks like for this particular case. And I think you have seen in uh, other amplifier uh, examples which we did in the in the JFET, uh, you saw saw uh, AC equivalent models similar way. This is this is the AC equivalent uh, model for this particular circuit, and then this is the whole derivation, um, and uh, which has been obtained from this uh, AC circuit. If you are interested, you can just pause and see how we have got this uh, uh, all these equations. This has been derived from uh, from Kirchhoff uh, current law. Uh, which is applied on this particular node you know that algebraic sum of all the currents at particular node is equals to zero and that's what your Kirchhoff's uh, current law is and uh, so which has been applied on this node and uh, from from there we have these equations and then ultimately uh, we will basically find out these equations so this we have already seen in the last to last slide and this was uh, a, a, the derivation derivation for that okay so so in in most of the numerical problems you will be using this uh, these uh, equ these formulas okay now uh, this is the same thing called pitch oscillator and these are my notes and uh, and this is the same circuit which we have seen previously uh, only the changes here uh, we are using the uh, uh, op amp and uh, 
and in this op-amp uh, here op-amp is the amplifier which is uh, basically providing the energy to this LC tank circuit and you can if you if you take this particular section of the tank uh, then you can represent it by Z3, Z1, Z2 like this and this is the short form of uh, derivation and you can find of the VF uh, is the same thing beta is equals to VF by V dot is ZP is equals to Z2 a parallel combination and then Z1 plus Z3 okay so in this way you can find out uh, the voltage gain okay so it's, it's the same thing which you saw uh, previously now now uh, so we had this equation so now in this equation this uh, we have put z1 is equals to 1 by j omega c1 z2 is equals to j omega c2 we have assumed because this is the culprit oscillator uh, we have two capacitors and one inductor so that's why uh, we are using two capacitor here and one inductor is my uh, z3 is the react uh, is the impedance of this particular uh, inductor uh, so you'll put all these values you can get uh, this uh, w uh, this uh, omega uh, which you can expand it and you can write 2 pi f and you will get the frequency okay so it's the same thing uh, you can you can uh, go through this derivation or the previous one and now we are going to see an example so let's say in this particular oscillator capacitor 1 is 10 nanofarad and capacitor 2 is 2 nanofarad uh, and inductor is 20 millihenry. We have to find the frequency and R1 and R4. So we have this op-amp here, uh, op-amp amplifier. Okay, so through this uh, we previously we saw the formulas for frequency and C uh, equivalent capacitor you will use those two formulas to find out the values your frequency is 1 by 2 pi under root LCEQ CEQ is the equivalent capacitor uh, and then this is the formula we will be using uh, you will put the value of capacitor here and then um, if you calculate you will get 1.66 nanofarad and uh, if you can see uh, you can calculate by putting this value into this and L is already known so you will get 27.5 kilohertz okay and then uh, ultimate our goal so we found the frequency the first part we have found but then we have to calculate the R1 and R4 so for that uh, uh, you will first you will have to calculate the beta which will be approximately equal to C2 by C1 put the value of uh, capacitors 2 by 10 which is 1 by 5 okay so that's your uh, beta and you know that a beta is equals to 1 so you put the value of beta there and then you'll get this uh, the value which, of the gain which should be a greater than 5 so at least you know that the gain is greater than 5 now in the inverting operational amplifier the voltage gain uh, of a uh, inverting operational amplifier is AV is equals to minus RF by R1. So this is the formula. You will have to uh, learn this formula and you will be seeing this in the uh, in the next uh, uh, linear circuit class also. Uh, we will drive it how we found this formula. But for now understand that uh, the voltage gain of the amplifier op-amp op is uh, minus RF by R1. And uh, this is equals, uh, so this is uh, so you will put the same value where this instead of this gain you will put uh, RF by R1 okay so through that you can find out the value of R1 so you have to assume something so for example here we have assumed if your R1 is equals to 1 kilo ohm your RF uh, uh, actually you ha we haven't assumed anything here we have taken this RF as 1 and uh, we have we are saying that your feedback resistance is basically going to be greater than 5 kilo ohm but then you can make a you can put some multiple also and you can get something else for example 2 kilo ohm and this will be your uh, 10 kilo ohm something like that okay uh, and in that case also your voltage gain is going to be uh, same okay so this is the problem based on culprit oscillator and let's see next so next we have a quartz crystal oscillator and this type of uh, oscillator has a high level of stability so whenever the high level of stability is required then we use the crystal uh, quartz crystal oscillator 
Um, it has a good selectivity for frequency also and very high quality factor which is between 10,000 to 20,000 and uh, this is the quartz crystal, uh, this is how it looks like, um, uh, one of the quartz crystal has been shown here and uh, this can be used in radio telecommunication and many digital applications also for example in the smartphones, uh, desktops uh, for generating the stable clock. They can be used in the Arduino also for generating the clock signal um, and uh, it can generate stable frequencies in tens of uh, kilohertz to hundreds of uh, megahertz. So it, uh, and, and if you see the working of this uh, quartz crystal, um, you can, uh, quartz crystal, this is based upon the inverse physioelectric effect. Uh, which means that uh, when the voltage is applied uh, to the quartz crystal, then uh, then the vibrations uh, basically will be produced. So when external AC voltage is applied to a to certain material, then there is a mechanical disformation uh, takes place. Okay, so that's what uh, that's the main principle of quartz, uh, quartz crystal oscillator. And uh, we see here, uh, this is the quartz crystal and, um, and then this is connected to some uh, AC voltage. So if the AC signal is applied of a particular frequency, then the crystal uh, oscillator material, it starts vibrating at the same frequency. And this effect is known as your inverse piezoelectric effect. So we, we use this principle uh, in uh, quartz crystal oscillator. And on the right hand side, you see the equivalent circuit model. Uh, where your CS is uh, representing your uh, motional capacitance and this capacitance basically depends upon the elasticity area of the plate and the thickness of the quartz. So this is the inside circuit, so inside circuit of this, okay, and which has this capacitor LS and RS in series where CS, CS is your motional capacitor. And uh, then you have this LS, which is the emotional uh, inductance, um, and it, it is defined as a mechanical mass of the, it defines the mechanical mass of the crystal, of the quartz crystal. And then you have RS resistors. So this uh, resistance, uh, it defines the real resistive loss, which happens in the crystals. And it's, it's like very small in few, like maybe milli ohm to 100 of uh, ohms. Uh, and then you have this shunt capacitors and this capacitor exists due to the electrodes. So the quartz crystal circuit uh, which you see here uh, closely then you will see that it is uh, acts like a LC tank uh, which means whenever it is used in amplifier as a feedback uh, this circuit then it will provide the frequency selectivity and using this uh, we can generate the oscillation at it specify as at a specific frequency. Now uh, while selecting the quartz crystal uh, for the specific application we need to decide at which resonant frequency uh, we are going to operate uh, this uh, quartz crystal. So, so let's see here uh, this is the graph between uh, ZP impedance, output impedance and the frequency and you see here uh, from here to here we have series resonance and then we have uh, and we have the parallel uh, sorry we have a parallel resonance here uh, this is the parallel resonance frequency so after this is the parallel resonance and uh, before this is the series resonance and these points they this represents your uh, series uh, Series, uh, res uh, series resonance frequency and uh, this provides your parallel resonance frequency. Okay, so impedance offered at a uh, series resonant frequency uh, by the crystal will be minimum because that's what we see here. If you see this is the minimum impedance uh, offered at a series resonance frequency and impedance offered at a uh, parallel resonant frequency will be maximum because it is at a higher point. And in between Fs and Fp uh, is the impedance which we get in, cap which is the inductive impedance we get in between these two frequencies. So here capacitive, here capacitive and then in between is your uh, inductive. And uh, these are the two formulas for the parallel res resonance uh, frequency and the series resonant frequency given by these uh, this formula. So your CP uh, and CS I already showed you in the in the circuit. This is your CP and this is your CS. 
uh, so using these uh, these uh, capacitive uh, these capacitor we have formed this uh, resonant frequency formula and uh, so we can see that uh, so we can see here uh, we have this uh, XLS let's let's maybe go back here so this is from this is right from here and here we have XLS is equals to 2 pi FLS and R is the resistance. So you can ignore this part. Uh, just see this reactance uh, LS is equals to 2 pi FLS. And then XES uh, capacitive uh, uh, reactance is given by 1 by 2 pi FCS for this is for series capacitor and this is for parallel. So this was your series capacitor. This is your parallel. So reactance for those two, um, and then if you calculate the impedance, then you will use this formula R S square series resistance plus, uh, uh, and then you subtract X L S minus X E S to the square, and then Z P is your uh, parallel uh, impedance. Okay, so parallel impedance is this whole parallel impedance. So first you calculate this series impedance and then you calculate these parallel impedance. So this series impedance is in parallel with CP, capacitive uh, CP. So that's why we have this reactance here. So you uh, multiply, uh, you basically uh, find the parallel combination of that and this is the result after that. So these were all the formulas which you will be using for numerical problems. Uh, but always remember one thing in this crystal oscillator is that it can be operated at either series or parallel resonant frequency. So there are different circuits for that. If you want to operate at a series resonant frequency, uh, then the circuit will be a little bit different. And if you want to operate at a parallel resonant frequency, the circuit is going to be a little bit different. But then at a uh, but all in all, always remember the circuit, uh, this quartz crystal will come in the feedback path and then you will be using some amplifier circuit along with that. Okay, so this was the quartz crystal oscillator and that's all for today. Thank you so much.